Hey everybody, welcome back to When Harry Met Board Games. I am Harry, and before we go any further, please don't forget to hit the like button down below and subscribe to our channel if you're interested in some more board game related content. Today, we have our inaugural, first ever debut of Thursday's Tabletop Tangent with yours truly, Harry. So this is a new series that I'm going to be starting where basically I will choose a topic. So there will be an overlying topic that will give some structure to this video. But at the same time, I'm just going to ramble on about that topic and speak to my heart's content about that topic, which is where the tangent part comes from. So I thought the alliteration worked. Thursdays, this will be airing on Thursdays, it'll be uploaded on Thursdays. Tabletop, it's, all, it's about all things tabletop related, board game related, and it's a tangent. So bear with me, guys. So today I thought it would be appropriate that for the first ever episode of TTT, that's a thing now, Thursday's Tabletop Tangent, I thought that it would be very appropriate to start off with my journey into the gaming hobby. How did I get into this hobby? So, first of all, it all started a long, long time ago. I'm not a young man anymore. So when I was a kid, I always liked games. I mean, what kid doesn't like games, right? Whether it's, you know, self-play or just free play or, or you know, non-structured play. But even the idea of structured play, rules, you know, and there being a clear winner in a game. I've always liked that. So I played a lot of games growing up with my, with my sister, my older sister, who taught me lots of little card games. She always had a bicycle deck, 52 card bicycle deck, and she would play lots of games and she would teach me them. Obviously, I played all the mass market games, Monopoly and Clue and Sorry and Trouble and all these types of games. But I went into adulthood having a strong appreciation for what gaming can be, right? Um, I was more of a video gamer in my teenage years, but I still appreciate it what a board game could do. It could bring people together, play, have some fun. But at the same time, I just I didn't necessarily appreciate the games themselves, right? The games left a lot to be desired. It was more about the experiences with the people, the interactions. But as an adult, and not too young of an adult, in my um, mid to late 20s, I actually came to discover Risk. And Risk is a game that's been around forever, but it's a game that I never really saw or noticed or really paid attention to um it was a a, a war-based mass market game but i started playing it with some friends and i really really liked it and i bought myself some modern um editions of risk some modern uh iterations of risk that do things a little bit different modify some of the rules and i had some fun playing risk for a few years primarily with my cousin rodney my cousin eligio and some of my other cousins as well and then i came to find out about Catan, another game that had been around for a while. And this was actually back in 2013. I had seen people play Catan a few years earlier, but I didn't really catch my attention. But in 2013, uh, some very good friend of ours, uh, Lila and Jean Wichenbach from Maine, they taught us how to play this game of Catan. Um, and I was just captivated with how interesting the game was you know it was different than anything i've ever played before and having to play to a certain amount of victory points and the ability to like trade with people and then having these resources that you're trying to accrue and, and manage them wisely so you could build your settlements and build roads and build cities i thought it was very very neat shortly after i bought my own copy of Catan, and my wife and i we started playing two-player Catan, which i would never really recommend where we would um control two two players each because it's really a three or four player game and um but we still had some fun i eventually bought myself not too long from the, after that rivals for Catan, which is the two player card game which made two players more realistic more viable and also it was slightly different gameplay wise but still had the Catan feel so that was cool and then i started exploring a little bit back then i didn't explore too much in 2014 i bought myself the game of Carcassonne, and I thought it was interesting, um, but I didn't appreciate, I didn't see its value at the time, honestly, I, 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 I oversimplified it in my mind, because Carcassonne, for those who aren't familiar, looks like a puzzle, you're puzzling together, laying down tiles to piece by piece, 
kind of create the board as you play. I didn't really see the nuances, the finer, the finer nuances of the game. So I didn't really appreciate it. So I actually got rid of it. I I I, I threw it away. Ooh, terrible. Um, but that was that for that. Now in 2015, late 2015, early 2016, my friend Wayne introduced me to the DC deck building game. And that game I found to be very interesting. I'm a big comic book guy. DC is not really my thing. Marvel is more of my up my alley, but I do appreciate the DC universe as well. And this deck building concept was new to me. You know, the idea of just having a small deck of weak cards and using them to buy and acquire bigger, stronger cards, ultimately to have the most victory points or the most valuable cards in your deck at the end of the game. And I was really, really interested in it. I was really captivated by it. And I went out and decided not to buy DC deck building because the game, you know, it was, it didn't quite capture me that much. And also, again, I'm not a, a, as big of a fan of the DC intellectual property. So I looked up and I found that there was a Marvel deck building game called Marvel Legendary. And I bought this game and I opened it up and I was so excited because I'm a huge Marvel fan. And it had so much content in it and storylines were in it. And I just started playing this game and I absolutely loved it. I adored it. And I started teaching it to everybody that was in my close circle of friends that I knew liked board games, which was not that big of a group. And once I got all of them hooked, I decided let's start a league where we will keep, we will play games competitively one-on-one -on -one and keep track of records and stats and have a playoff tournament at the end of each season and finally a championship game. And I did that for three years, starting from 2016, uh, three seasons, all the way to late 2018. And it was it was a lot of fun. It was also a lot of work. I was the commissioner of the league, and, and I had to type up a lot of information and send emails and updates and get everybody scheduled to work together. I had nine different adults trying to get on the same page as far as schedule is concerned. That's never, that's never an easy thing. Um, so that was a lot of fun. But it wasn't until 2017, I would say it was around March of 2017, where I started watching The Dice Tower on YouTube, kind of like you guys are watching me right now on YouTube. I started watching The Dice Tower with Tom Vassell and Sam Healy and Z Garcia, and I particularly searched a top 10 deck building games list that they had done because I really had seen at that point that I was fascinated by deck building games. I had liked the DC deck building. I liked the Marvel Legendary game. And I saw their list. And a lot of these games really, really piqued my interest. In particular, one game that piqued my interest that I ended up buying weeks after, just a few weeks after watching those videos, was um, the Dominion, the father or the grandfather of all deck building games. So I went out and I bought myself Dominion and Dominion in Tree, which is the first standalone expansion. I, I, it once was a standalone expansion. I think in the second edition now it's not standalone anymore. But I bought the first two big boxes of Dominion and had them come in the mail just a few, few days later. And I would say that that was the transition into the board game hobby. I'd say March of 2017, exactly three years ago, is when I took that next step into the board game hobby, where I started looking at videos online, doing research online, um, using Board Game Geek responsibly because I had already created a Board Game Geek account about a year earlier, but I had used it really to like use the geek market and buy things, particularly for DC deck building and stuff like that. So I had never really used it for research purposes, but I started doing the research. I started buying games that weren't just, you know, typical games that stood out to me, but it was like more niche type of games. I started creating a diverse um, repertoire of games, you know, encompassing different gaming mechanisms and different gaming themes. And I started, and like a, a month or two later, I all of a sudden had a nice little 20 game uh, stash of games, a nice little starter collection. As you can see, the problem has grown over the years, but I was very, very excited. Um, and, and I kind of never stopped, you know, it's been three years and I haven't lost a bit of the excitement. If anything, I'm even more excited now. And now doing this video, uh, this YouTube channel, 
has added to my excitement, has added to the hobby. There's so many aspects of this hobby, down from the research to the actual purchase of the game, to getting the game come in the mail, to opening that box, to punching out the tokens, to reading that rule book, to sharing it with others and seeing the happiness and smiles on their faces, you know, to finding, you know, expansions to my favorite games, to, you know, storing my games, you know, in a you know, space efficient manner, using different storage solutions, finding different accessories to trick up my games. All of these things have played into my gaming hobby. And now again, finally culminating in this YouTube channel where I get to just share my love and my passion for board games because I legitimately think it's the best hobby out there. So that was pretty much it. That's my journey into the board game hobby. And I still consider myself to be a noob. There might be people watching or or people out there who are even newer to this hobby than I am. But I've only been here for three years. And I'm sorry, this game, this hobby has lots of veterans who've been here for decades. So I don't even compare in that sense. But um, but I'm just one guy trying to do his part to help this industry grow. So much other industries that are growing that I don't think are as rewarding and fulfilling. I don't think they give you as much bang for your buck as the board game hobby does. So that's it. That's it for the first ever historical Thursday's Tabletop Tangent with Harry. Thank you so much for taking out some time to watch this video. Uh, please don't forget to hit the like button down below. Subscribe to our channel if you're interested in some more board game related content. Well, this is Harry from When Harry Met Board Games signing off. Take care. Bye-bye.